Hi everyone, this is Sonu Satidas. Today I'm going to talk about the new Microsoft Azure service for uh, running containers uh, in, the, in the cloud platform that is the new Azure Container App Service. So if you see, uh, the Container App Service is currently in preview. That means it is not available for production environment. There can be changes when it comes into uh, public, uh, sorry, Gen G8. That means when it comes to into production. So currently, this is uh, a new service that helps us to run the Docker containerized applications on the Azure platform. So primarily, this is uh, used to deploy one or more containerized applications uh, in a serverless uh, platform. Means if you have a microservice, you want to deploy uh, multiple containerized applications in the Azure platform, then we can use the container apps. So this is one of the best service for uh, deploying your API endpoints, even driven applications, or you have you need to execute some kind of background processing task, or for deploying microservices, you can use the container apps. This is coming with the Dapper support. Means if you are creating microservices with Dapper. Then you can uh, use the container apps as it provides the built in support for the Dapper platform or Dapper environment. You can easily scale the applications based on the HTTP traffic or uh, based on a queue, or you can also use the Kubernetes event driven autoscaler uh, supported parameters. That directly supported here. So while configuring the scaling for your containers, you can choose either the HTTP traffic or you can choose the uh, the queues, or you can also select any of the supported uh, KEDA uh, scalar parameters. So when it comes to the features, uh, we can run multiple containers, multiple versions of the same application. We can uh, scale the the, the uh, container to running inside the container apps based on different uh, parameters, including the KDA supported uh, scalar parameters. It support the HTTP ingress. So if you want, you can deploy your application and uh, make it accessible only within a virtual network, or you can add one HTTP ingress that helps you to access your application publicly from anywhere. You can split the traffic across multiple versions of your application. That means you can deploy multiple revisions of your application and you can split your traffic. Like if I have version 1.2, then I can uh, say, okay, 20% of my traffic should go to that and, and version 2.0 and 80% of the traffic should go to that. So I can uh, split the incoming traffic across multiple versions of the traffic. Use internal uh, ingress and service discovery for securing the internal only endpoint. Means if you want to deploy the application that is accessible only within this particular private network, you can make it uh, internal only, and it provides service discovery uh, for your applications. Also, I said uh, uh, there is a Dapper support for building the microservices. It's a framework or uh, platform for building microservices. So you can use the Dapper uh, uh, platform or framework for building this microservices and it provides built-in support to Dapper. This support public and private container registries means if you want, you can uh, deploy your containers from the uh, private container registry, such as uh, Azure Container Registry. 
that is easier or you can use any other public container registry like your docker uh, hub or uh, any other public container registry which can be of the Azure CLI extension and the ARM template support, you can use uh, extension, CLI extensions to create and deploy the container apps uh, since it is in a, a public preview. So you need to uh, use the extension to create and deploy your container apps. And you can also see the ARM template support is available. VNet integration helps you to deploy your container apps in a private virtual network so that you can make sure that your application is accessible only from the virtual network. But if you want, you can make it accessible from outside by using an HTTP public ingress. Secrets management is supported, means if you have some sensitive data like a password, connection string, or anything that needs to be used inside your application. You can store these secrets in the container apps and that can be later passed into the, the application uh, using templates or maybe uh, the, the environment variables. The application logs with log analytics. You can collect the logs which is generated by the application in uh, log analytics and data, you can analyze that to uh, identify the performance, the, uh, the execution nature of your application. For creating the uh, container apps using the CLI, the first thing that you need to do is to add an extension for the container app because uh, it is in public preview you have to add this extension uh, or container app to the Azure CLI. Then you also need to register the Microsoft.app namespace to your uh, subscription because uh, uh, it's, it's now in the stage of moving this uh, apps from the Microsoft.web namespace to Microsoft.app namespace. So you need to register this Microsoft.app namespace in your subscription. Later, you can uh, create your um, container apps where you will get, uh, you need to first go and create an environment. So you can create an environment, something similar to the app service uh, plan where you can deploy multiple container apps inside an environment. So environment is just uh, acting like a logical container for your container apps. So you need to go and create a container app inside your resource group. So for that, you can use the AZ container app environment create command that is going to create a container app environment. Then inside the container app, you can deploy the container app using the easy container app create command. You there you need to specify the name, resource group, and uh, the 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 container app environment name. What is the Docker image that you are planning to deploy for this container app? And you can specify the target port number for connecting to your application. And also you can specify what kind of ingress uh, need to be deployed. So you can say external for make it publicly accessible. So as we uh, discussed uh, while creating the uh, container apps, the first step is to create an environment. So what is an environment? It's an, simply an isolation boundary where you can deploy one or more container apps. Container apps runs in the same environment, are deployed in the same virtual network, and they write the logs in the same log analytics workspace. So that means they share the same virtual network. They write the logs into the same log analytics workspace. Once the container apps environment is created, you are now allowed to deploy your uh, containers uh, inside the container app. So you can create a container app which deploys 
one or more containers inside the container apps and beyond. So containers in the container apps can use any language or framework or environment. It can be a Docnet uh, application, Java application, or it can be a Node.js application. But currently, it supports only the Linux-based images, so you can uh, create and deploy only the Linux uh, application, Linux Docker images into the container apps. And you can deploy it from any public or private uh, registry. So you can uh, uh, say when you deploy a container app, it is creating a revision of your, uh, your container app. So it is by default creates a default revision. Uh, when you deploy the first container, and later when you make changes inside your configurations, maybe you are changing the settings of your of your container, or maybe you are changing the version of your container application image, or you are changing the uh, configuration of your container uh, app or containers, like uh, you can change the allocated compute, like the CPU and RAM, so any configuration changes that you make to the container app is going to create a new revision automatically. So that means when the configuration changes inside the container app, it creates a new revision of your So currently it supports only HTTP and HTTPS protocols. And uh, that means you can connect using uh, port number 80 or 440. So when you deploy your container apps, it is deployed, uh, means it is deploying these containers inside the ports. The ports is the concept that we use in Kubernetes. And uh, behind the scene, the container apps using the Kubernetes uh, deployment or Kubernetes environment for deploying these containers. So that means any container that you deploy in as part of this container apps runs as ports. So every port may contain one or more uh, containers uh, inside this port. So containers in a port uh, share the same hard disk, network resources, and uh, experience the same application lifecycle. So typically when we deploy the applications in the port, so we, we, we deploy uh, a single container or single container app inside this uh, port. But some cases, uh, we also deploy multiple containers as part of the same port. Uh, like if I have a sidecar application for logging or monitoring or maybe for so even handling or some kind of uh, uh, processing, I can run some kind of sidecar applications as part of the main application. In such cases, we can run multiple containers in a single port as well. So these uh, multiple containers that runs inside a single port will share the same storage same network and the same uh, uh, application lifecycle so define uh, you can define more than one container in a template configurations container array that means if you are deploying it using the uh, arm template inside this uh, templates containers array configuration you can specify the list of containers that you want to deploy as part of the same uh, port so but when you deploy this uh, multiple containers inside this port, uh, you need to uh, understand there are some limitations that containers that require root access cannot be, uh, cannot run inside this container app. Because sometimes we need to run some application with a root access privilege or administrative access privilege. So such containers we cannot run inside this container apps. And only Linux images you can run inside this container. So currently it is supporting only the Linux based uh, uh, containers. So when you specify the container size 
means when you deploy a new container, you can specify the CPU and memory that is uh, that need to be allocated to the uh, containers. So you can specify any of this combination. So if you are specifying the CPU as 0 0.25, then you can specify the memory as 0 0.5. So you need to specify this combination. You cannot uh, give a, a wrong configuration or wrong combination uh, for CPU and memory. Whenever you uh, assign one, one CPU, then you have to specify the memory as two GP. So revisions uh, typically uh, uh, deploys whenever you make changes inside your application. So when the first revision is automatically created, whenever you deploy the application for the first time. So when you deploy your application or when you create your container app, it automatically creates one revision and new revisions will be automatically created when you make the configuration changes. And these revisions are immutable. That means you cannot delete or modify those uh, revisions. But you can create new revisions uh, based on these previous uh, revisions. So the revisions mode can be a multiple or single. That means if you want to run only one revision at a time. Suppose if I have deployed my application's version 1.0, and I want only the version 1.0 to run at a time, then I can uh, set the revision mode as single. But if, I, if I'm deploying uh, two different versions of this application, suppose if I have a version 1.0 and version 1.5, but I want the version 1.0 to get 25% uh, of the traffic, and the remaining 75% of the traffic should go to the version 1.5. In such cases, I can deploy both the revisions or I can run both the revisions and uh, split the traffic across multiple revisions. In that case, I need to set the revision mode as multiple in that the application will be serving uh, the request uh, either by using the revision or revision 2 based on the traffic that you are allowed. So the traffic directions, uh, as I have mentioned, you can set the multiple revision mode and you can uh, say, okay, 80% of my traffic should go to one revision and the remaining 20% should go to another revision. So this is a better solution for doing uh, uh, the A-B uh, testing uh, or blue-green deployment. You can use this a multiple revision mode approach in container apps. So we can configure the uh, traffic splitting inside your uh, configuration in such a way that the revision name need to be specified and the weight, the weight number you have to specify in percentage, but make sure that you the total uh, value of this weight or the percentage is 100 so it should not exceed 100 or it should not be it should not be less than 100 so you have to make sure that the whatever revisions you are deploying the uh, the total value of this weight or this uh, percentage for traffic splitting should be 100 so when you run this uh, microservices with container apps you can uh, Deploy multiple versions of your application, multiple applications, multiple APIs within the same container app environment. So, suppose if I want to run a microservices application which has multiple API services, I can use a single uh, container app's environment, and in a, inside a single container app environment, I can deploy my first container app. Which, which can be a microservice one, and uh, another container app within the same environment that can be the service two. So the container apps providing the scaling of your application, independent scaling of your services, you can deploy multiple versions of this application, and you can easily upgrade the versions, uh, or you can also uh, upgrade the configuration of your uh, applications and the infrastructure independently 
uh, in a container app. So it provides built-in uh, service discovery for uh, the applications and uh, it provides the native date dapper integration. So if you have created your microservice using the dapper, then you can uh, use uh, make use of this dapper environment that is uh, provided by the container apps. Now let's see how we can create a container app in the Azure portal. So here, for that, first I'm going to create a resource group. And inside of the resource group, I'm going to create a container registry where I'm going to store my uh, Docker images. So first, I'm going to my resource groups and then create a new resource group. So I can give the name of this resource group as container groups. And I'm going to set this location as East US. Uh, let me create that. Okay, so you can see my resource group is created. Inside this resource group, I'm going to create my container registry. So I'll just go to create and search for container registry. And I can specify the container registry name, location, and this queue. So here we can see my subscription, the resource group, and here I can specify the name of the container registry. So I'm going to keep the name as BSD container containers. Yes, the BST containers is available. So I'm going to specify the location as again East US. So let me select East US. And I can specify this queue as standard. And for networking and the encryption, I can leave the default values as it is and create. This may take uh, a couple of minutes to create this container registry. So you can see the deployment is in progress. We will see the container registry creation will complete in another uh, couple of uh, minutes. Yes, you can see the container registry is created here. And if you uh, go to the repositories. You can see currently there is no repositories inside this uh, container registry. And in the overview, you can see the login server name, SKU, and the provisioning state and other information like uh, resource group, location, subscription, etc. So the first thing that you need to do first is uh, enable the admin account for your uh, container registry. So for that, you can go to the uh, access key section and then inside this admin user, you can enable this switch that is going to enable the admin user for your container registry. After this uh, admin user is enabled, now we can build our first a container application using .NET. So I'm going to use .NET 6 for building my application. So I'm going to create an MVC application. .NET new MVC. And then I say container app UI. So this is my application. So I'm giving the container app UI as the name for my MVC application. It's been created, so let let me move to this uh, the application folder and open that project in VS Code.
So here, this is my uh, application. And this application has a home controller. The home controller provides index and privacy actions. And in the index action, you will see a simple home page that is going to display the welcome message. So if I go back to my index, so here you can see a welcome message. So I'm just modifying this to welcome to container apps. So let me save this and run it locally to check whether it is working as expected. So let me say .NET build. I'm going to compile this and I can run this. It's taking time for yeah, it's done. So that document run command I'm going to use to run this locally. Yep, I can go and Click on this link. Yeah, here is my application. So uh, my application is running locally. So now I need to containerize this application. I have to dockerize this application and uh, build this image and push that image to my uh, container registry. To containerize this application, I am going to create a Docker file inside of this project. Docker file. And I need to write this uh, set of commands to dockerize this. I have this commands already created. I'm just copying this uh, commands. So this uh, is going to use an .NET 6 SDK for building and publishing this uh, application and then uses one .NET uh, ASP.NET for runtime for running this container app UI application. So after this, uh, I'm going to create one Docker ignore file. So inside this Docker ignore, I'm going to use the folders bin and obj which i don't want to copy while dockerizing this image so i can go and uh, dockerize this application so let me clear out the screen and say docker build minus t and then keep container app ui colon it is space dot so i'm going to specify the uh, docker image name as container app ui and the tag as latest and the dot represents the uh, the path of this docker file so let's start building this docker image you can see the build process is going on once the build process is completed it's I can see my Docker image in my local machine. Then I will run this uh, in my local machine, check whether this Docker application is running as expected uh, in, a, in my local machine. Yes, you can see the uh, image has been created. You can now see the image which is created in my machine here. Yes, this is the image that I have created just now. Now I'm going to run this image locally. Docker run minus p is eight zero eight zero eight zero minus minus rm t 
name and then the name of this container app. Okay, it's running. So I can access my application on port number 8080. So let me open this browser. Say local host 8080. Yes, I can see my application running locally on the Docker container. So what I can do is I'll push this image to my uh, Azure Container Registry. For that, first I need to log in to my Azure Container Registry. So I have already logged into my Azure account. So I don't need to use the AZ login command. Uh, if you if you if you have not logged into the Azure account, you can use the AZ login command. But I have already logged into the Azure account, so I'm not using the AZ login command. Now I'm going to use AZ, AZ ACR login command to log into my uh, Azure Container Registry. My Container Registry name is BST Containers, so I can specify that name here. So let's see whether I'm able to log into the ACR. Yes, I have successfully logged in to the ACR. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to use the AZ ACR build command, push the code to the ACR and build the image and push from the Azure itself. So let me type AZ ACR build, then I can type registry, and the registry name is this. Type an image, and the image name is container app UI, and the dot for the location of my Docker file, or so that is a source path. That is the current folder. So I'm using the dot. Let me press enter. You can see it's uploading the source code into the Azure. And then it built the image and push that image to the container registry. This may take a couple of uh, minutes. Yes, it's built and now it's to start pushing this image to the ACR. Yeah, you can see the image has been pushed to the ACR. Let's go and verify that inside the ACR. So I'll go to my ACR and put repositories. And there I can see container app UI is here. And the latest version of this image is pushed. Now let me go back and create a container app. Uh, in my Azure subscription. For that, I'm going to uh, create a resource and then I'm going to search for the container app. So we'll see the container app which is in preview is listed. Let me select that and click on create. First of all, I need to go and select my subscription and resource group. So the resource group is selected as container group. And I can specify the name of the container app. So which I'm gonna give as uh, 
container app UI. So this is my container app name and you have to deploy a, every container app that you create inside a container app environment. So I don't have any container app environment so I'm going to create a new container app environment by clicking on this create new. Here I can specify the name of the environment. So let me give the name as uh, my container app environment. Location I'm going to select as East US. So currently this is in preview. So only limited locations you can see here. So I'm selecting the East US and say create. If you want you can enable the monitoring here you can see uh, log analytics workspace will be automatically created and you can also see the uh, networking configuration so if i want to use i can use my own virtual network for that i need to select the yes and select the uh, virtual network and I need to have two subnets. One is for the control plane subnet and another one is for the app subnet. So one, the control plane subnet is used to deploy the uh, Kubernetes control plane and the app subnet is used to deploy our uh, worker uh, environments. That means the ports will be deployed on that. So we don't want to go and explicitly create the virtual network so i'm going with the default option that is the uh, use your uh, your own network option i'm selecting no and let me go and create it so here you can see my container app is selected let me go and click on the next here i can either start with a uh, built-in image, a quick start image which is provided by Azure but I have my registry available so I can um, uh, go and choose it from my ACR uh, but if you want you can start with this quick start image so uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, uh, go ahead with this quick start image only but if uh, if you want to start with your uh, image which is already uploaded in ACR, you can go and select uh, and de deselect this option and specify the name of the container and then specify the container registry and from here the list you can select your uh, container registry and from the registry you will be able to see the image and the image tag. So for the first time I am going to select the quick start image so i'll go with this uh, default image that is a hello world container and the uh, default uh, cpu and memory allocated is 0 0.25 cpu and 0 0.5 gb memory and for the application ingress settings you can see ingress is enabled that means you can uh, access this application uh, from outside with uh, HTTP port number 80. So I'll go and click on create. So this may take a couple of minutes to create the environment as well as the container app. As you can see the deployment is completed so let me go to the container app instance so here you can see the container app is created and here is the application URL uh, through which I can access my application so I can click on this URL yes you can see the application is running on Azure. Now if you see in the application configuration section you will see an option called revision management and below you can also see the containers. 
So if you go to the containers, you will be able to see the containers that is running inside your uh, container app, UI container app. So here you can see currently we have this simple hello world container is running and this is the configuration for the currently running container. And inside the environment variables, if you have any environments, environment variables, you can see that here. But currently we don't have anything. And if you want to make changes inside this configuration, you can click on this edit and deploy and that will be creating a new revision. So we can also see the revision configurations under the revision management. If you go to revision management, you can see currently one revision. This is the default revision created. And this default revision is created and 100% traffic is going to this revision. But if you want, you can create a new revision and then deploy uh, uh, the new container. That means the, the, the containerized application that we have deployed into uh, the ECI. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new re uh, revision by clicking on this create a new revision. And here I can specify the name or suffix that you want to apply for your uh, uh, revision. So typically for the revisions, if you, if you go back to the previous one, Here for the revision, every revision name is something like your uh, container app name, then double hyphen, and then there's a random string. So you can see here we have this uh, revision. The revision uh, name is the container app name and uh, some random characters. But instead of this random characters, what you want to specify that you can uh, provide as the suffix. So while creating a new revision, I'm giving the name as suppose a ver version 1, that is V1. So that is the suffix that I'm providing. And I don't want to run this uh, built-in uh, Docker image. Instead of this, I'm deleting this. I'm going to add my own container from the ACR. So let me click on add and from here I can specify the container name as uh, app1. Select container registry and from here you can specify your container registry. Select the image and from here you can select a tag that is the latest which we have already. And I can allocate uh, the CPU and memory. So I'm going to give 0 0.50 as the CPU and the valid combination is 1 GB memory. So and I don't have any environment variables. So I just click OK. So here I can see one container will be created inside this. Click on next. You want to configure the scaling. So if you want to configure the auto scaling for your container, you can configure the scaling rule here. So currently we have the uh, image that is one image. And I don't want to configure any auto scaling condition now. Let me go and create this. So this is going to create a new revision. But you can see currently this is the revision which is handling all 100% traffic. But you can uh, see the revision is created and if you click on this show inactive revisions. Let me refresh. Yeah, so here you can see, I can see the new revision is created uh, and the traffic is now moving into this new revision. So you can see 100% traffic is going to the new revision that I have created. So if I go inside this revision, you can see the container configurations for that particular revision. 
So let me go and access this application. So this is the application URL. Let me refresh. And I can see this application is uh, deployed. Now I want to update the application and I want to update the uh, version of this application in my ACR and deploy a new version of this application inside. So currently you can see I'm deploying version 1. So I want to deploy the version 2. So what I'm going to do is I'll open my project here and inside this index page I'm making a small change in the message here. Say this is version 2.0 uh, of container app UI. So I'm going to save this. Go back to the command prompt and I need to push that image here. So I'll say AZ ACR build with the uh, image, but I, I will specify the image version tag as 2.0. So you can see uh, I'm pushing to the same registry, but this time I'm specifying the image name as container app UI. 2.0. So let me run this. You can see the image pull process is successfully completed. Now I can go back to the Azure portal and see whether the new image is pushed successfully or not. So I'll go to my registry. Go to the repositories. Select the container app image. And you can see that two, version 2.0 is pushed. Now I want to deploy this new version of this application into the container app UI. So what I'm going to do, I'll create a new revision. So click on create new revision. And I'll keep the suffix as version 2, that is V2. And I, you can see currently this image which is running is the latest, but I want to delete and add the new image so i will just go and specify here as app one and just specify the image so from here i'm selecting the container app ui and the version i'm selecting that is the tag i'm selecting is 2.4 and i can also specify the cpu and the memory so let's go and create. So this is going to create a new revision. Yes, it's created the new revision. That is V2 is created and 100% traffic is now going to this V2. So let me go to the browser and refresh this page and you can see the version 2 is now visible. Now if I go back to my application, I can see at a time I will be able to run only one version of this application. Means one revision is handling all the requests. That means the 100% traffic goes to one revision. But I want to split the traffic uh, between two versions, that is V1 and V2, that 50% uh, of the traffic will go to V1 and 50% of the traffic I need to uh, forward to version 2. For that, 
first i need to go and change the revision mode so here you can see the revision mode is selected as single which means only one revision will be active at a time so i need to go and change the revision mode to multiple and say apply so now once it is modified you can see the traffic option is updatable means you can go and change the uh, traffic values the percentage values uh, you can modify so what i want to do what i want to do is i want to make this version 1 and the version 2 active so i am selecting both and here i will specify 50 percentage for the version 2 and 50 percentage for the version 1 and let me save this so the changes will be saved and I can see when I run this application uh, some of my requests will go to the revision 1 that is uh, v1 and the uh, other requests can go to the revision v2 yes it is completed now let me go to the application in browser and here I am refreshing this you can see this is the version 1 that I can see when I refresh some of the requests may go to the version 2. Here you can see now I am able to access the version 2.0 also. So that means that traffic will be split between version 1 and the version 2 of my container app.